Yo, what's going on guys? Rob here from Show and Shutdown. And today we are doing hot takes of anime TikTok part 9. Let's do it. Who gave Vegeta his most embarrassing L? So I'm just going to pause this real quick. We have Cell, Raccoon, Frieza, Goku, Black. We have Android 18 and Jiren. So the first two that come to mind are Frieza and Android 18. The reason why I say that is when we look at the Frieza fight, I mean, there was a moment when Vegeta was just on the ground, couldn't really do anything, and Frieza is just literally pushing a rock into his wounds with his foot just completely disrespecting Vegeta on all levels knowing that he's a prince of all sands knowing that Frieza blew up planet Vegeta and took out King Vegeta his father Frieza is so disrespectful but there's also a moment when Android 18 was breaking Vegeta's arms it was just ridiculous I'm probably giving that to Frieza man Frieza just had no respect for sands at all and Vegeta being the prince of all sands was something that made Frieza really turn up on him so I think that was his most embarrassing L for me. But let's keep going. Say a controversial opinion about an anime that'll piss people off. Oh, y'all ain't gonna like this one, but it's facts. Okay. Luffy has little to no character development at all throughout One Piece. All right, so we all know he hasn't watched One Piece, but it's all right though. Let's keep watching. He simply just got stronger. He is fundamentally the same person, episode one, as he is episode 900. See, I see what he's trying to say. He's trying to go after the fact that Luffy has the same goal. Luffy has always had the same goal of wanting to become the Pirate King, but that does not mean he's had no character development at all. When I think about Luffy's character development, the first scene that actually comes to mind is Luffy versus Usopp. That event showed us how much Luffy had to change because there was a moment when Luffy and Usopp were fighting on the ground and he almost told Usopp to leave the crew. And that moment alone changed Luffy's perspective on what it means to be a captain because Sanji kicked him and, and put him in check. Sanji basically told Luffy, listen, if you start talking like that, I'm out of here. Like, we don't need a captain that thinks he's above everybody else. And that's what changed Luffy's perspective on what it meant to really be a captain. That alone is a major character development piece for Luffy in the story of One Piece. So to say he has no character development, I disagree. Yes, he has the same goal of wanting to be the Pirate King, but Luffy could not be close to where he is now in Wano if he did not develop throughout the series. It just wouldn't make sense at all. But let's keep watching. Also, Ace's death was 100% his own fault. Hey, hey, I, I, I can't argue that last point right there. I'm sorry to all my One Piece fans out there. Yes, I can say that it wasn't solely Ace's fault, but Ace played a big role in his death. I mean, Ace did not have to die, if we're being honest. Ace did not have to pursue Blackbeard. And I get it, he's like Roger. He's always just gonna go for it no matter what. But it's also a point where you have Shanks, going to your captain and literally warning him and even Whitebeard okayed it so Whitebeard has some fault in this issue as well but when we talk about even in the marine ford war we freed ace ace is running away with luffy all he has to do is keep moving he turns back and starts boxing with sakazuki for whatever reason and he ends up losing his life that is ace's fault not saying that it wasn't warranted because he was chatting, he was talking a lot of trash, but Ace, all he had to do was keep running, and he, Ace would have still been in the story today. So Ace definitely played a huge role in his death. But let's keep going. We made it. We finally made it! After all this time, the secret dungeon. <laughs> Yo, it's about to get real, bro. Okay, are you ready? Yep, let's go. <laughs> all right, now things are about to go down. All this stuff has been destroyed. Do you think? Yep. Someone else is here. <laughs> Yo, he's shooting no, that one piece right now. It. He is shooting that ha, one piece. Ha, ha. So you finally showed up, huh? Okay, <laughs> now they're about to start fighting. Let's go. Ha, ha, ha. And there's nothing you can do to stop me. <laughs> Bro, what the hell? They just talked the whole time. All right, next episode will be the fight. Hey, Dad, do you want to go see the new thing I made? Well, I don't want to see the villain's backstory. Oh, my God. <laughs> I won't stop till they're all dead. And, of course, one guy killed his whole family, so now he has to eliminate the entire human species in order to bring justice. That makes perfect sense. Let's go, they're fighting. He did it. He did it. He beat it. That's it? That's it? Yeah, let's go. We took 20 episodes leading up to this fight just to get him out in one hit? Stupid-ass show, bro. 
Hey, all I'm gonna say is don't blame Oda for this. This is all Toei Animation's fault. He's shooting that One Piece. And listen, I can't blame him. I can't blame him. That is the only flaw when it comes to One Piece for me, is that the anime has terrible pacing. Listen, but when you're binge watching One Piece, it's one of the greatest things ever. Because every episode just goes by so quickly. People are always turned off by the amount of episodes that are on One Piece. But when you're really binging it, you don't even feel it. You're just involved in the story. When it comes week to week, that's when you really start to feel that pacing. You really start to feel that pacing for real. So I get where he's coming from. Let's keep going. One MC got to go from each row. Mmm, one MC's got to go from each row. So we have Takamichi, Asta, Deku. Then we have Yusuke, Ichigo, and Goku. And then we have Luffy and probably going to be Naruto. And then Edward Elric from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Let's see who he goes with. Who you picking? Uh, Takamichi, Asta, or Deku. Okay, Asta is the only one that's like spot is solidified. Yeah. Deku and Takamichi both be pissing me off. I don't like Deku. He just not my type of MC. He kind of he kind of on the softer side of the MCs. I know he's supposed to turn up in uh, the upcoming season. We'll see if he change any or not. But right now, I don't like Deku. And Takamichi, I really don't like Takamichi either. I get it. He don't really got time to learn how to fight and all of that. Doo -doo -doo -doo. But bro is so trash. Like he is so <laughs> trash. Like there are so many things that he. That's a fact. And like oh no, it's just the him standing there, just looking. Like I, like yeah. even if he he can't do anything, I want him to try to do something. Exactly. He's standing there looking. Like oh, what do I do? Like Takamichi be pissing me off, bro. I swear to God. But I think I'm gonna I'm gonna keep Takamichi over uh, over Deku. What? All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. After he just broke down why it should be Takamichi. He went and took Deku, which kind of confuses me because we get it. He has to go back in the past. He has things that he has to take care of. But when it comes to fighting, first of all, you have the mindset of a 26 year old going back to a 12 year old body. You know that you're going to be joining gangs. You know that there's violence involved. You know what the stakes are. You know who you're trying to save in the present day. You're trying to save Hina. What are you going to do in that few moments when you're going into these gang wars? What are you going to do? And I feel like he freezes up way too much when it should be obvious what the answer is. Get stronger and start boxing with the best. You already have the respect of a Mikey. You already have the respect of a Draken. There's nothing really more you need to do. And if you want to become the head of Toman to have even more power, you need to learn how to box at some point. Like, it just makes no sense to me that Takamichi still hasn't figured out that side yet. And I'm not saying he has to be the best fighter in Toman, but can you at least keep up with, with, with some people? Like, I mean, my gosh, you're getting saved during Bloody Halloween and all these things. You have to learn how to box at some point if you want to be the head of Toman. So first row, I'm taking Takamichi. It's no brainer for me. Let's see, Yusuke, Ichigo, or Goku. This one's tough. Ooh, now this one, this yeah. one is tough. This yeah. one is tough. Ichigo staying and Goku staying. Mm. Yusuke, I'm sorry, bro. I love you, but you got to go for real in this one. See, that one's so tough because popularity-wise, you have to go with Ichigo and Goku. But I, I, I love Yusuke's character too, man. I really, really do. I think that... I mean, popularity-wise, I, I think you just have to go with Ichigo and Goku. I, I, you just have to do it. And then Luffy, Naruto, or uh, Edward. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Luffy, you can bounce. What? Yo, Luffy stays getting disrespected. I, I don't understand. I I really am confused why people disrespect Luffy like this. So you mean to tell me you have a row of Luffy, Naruto, and Edward Elric, and you say Luffy can go? Hey, man, I, I cannot agree with that at all, but it is what it is. Let's keep going. Oh, hold on. So we have the old era, current era, and new era of One Piece. It looks like there's different categories for Pirate King, the Strongest, the Marines, and then the Swordsman. The categories here just make this a little bit weird, but I like how the eras are kind of broken up. So let's see what's going on. Okay, so there's a few things we definitely need to discuss on this list. Roger mm -hmm. is definitely the king, no cap. But Rox is the strongest. We're talking about the captain of Whitebeard, Big Mom, and Kaido who had to get jumped by Garp and Roger. Whitebeard would be the strongest of the current era, but you know, I ain't gonna spoil nothing about what happened. Hey, so he said something. Whitebeard would be the strongest of the current era. All the Whitebeard haters out there, 
I tried to tell y'all, but it is what it is. Then he put Rox as the strongest in the old era, which you could definitely make a case. You could definitely, definitely make a case. We just need to see how that fight went down, though. Based on the story alone, we can say that maybe he would be the strongest because, obviously, he had to box with Roger and Garp, but we don't know if he was getting assisted by everybody else. And that's the thing that people are kind of neglecting. Were Roger and Garp both fighting Rox, plus Whitebeard, plus Big Mom, plus Kaido, plus Shiki, plus Captain John, and everybody all at the same time? Or was everyone taking turns? Or were they dueling Rox by themselves and Big Mom and Kaido and Whitebeard were fighting other people? Like, we just don't know how the fight really went down. So until we know that, I'm not sure we can say for sure that Rox was the strongest, but I get where he's coming from. I got the mantle of the biggest Marine for real. But Odin has the title of the strongest swordsman, so we got to give that back. Oh, Odin got the title for the strongest swordsman in the old era? Again, I've seen Rox wield a sword both in the manga panel and the anime, but again, we don't know if that was his main source of combat. That was just a picture, so we don't know what's really going on. And then we could also speak on Ryuma, who everyone loves to say how Ryuma was one of the strongest swordsmen in One Piece, but there's so much that we don't know about Ryuma that it's kind of tough to really say that Ryuma was the best in his prime. But these are two people that you can put in the ballpark alongside Odin. But let's keep watching. Mihawk definitely got the current sword of the title. Yeah. Maka Inu does have the Marine title. Fuck him. Sorry, at this point it's involuntary. Let's just move past it. Kaido definitely has strongest, but that's because Whitebeard moved on. And mm. I can't think of a freer man than Shanks at this point, so he definitely has current era. But for the new era, unless Black... Okay, so he said something about Shanks that was very important. He said he can't see somebody freer than Shanks right now. Shanks, again, is somebody that is roaming the seas, having conversations with the Gorosei and things like that. Shanks is in that conversation, y'all. A lot of y'all sleep on Shanks, I'm telling you. Blackbeard got somebody in his pocket, Zoro got this. But Kobe don't have this. This belongs to Smoker or Hina. Kobe might have next, but he don't have new. Oh, so Kobe doesn't have the next spot for the Marines. I think it's too early to give it to Kobe. But is it Smoker? And uh, Nah, I, I, I'm not seeing that. I don't think Smoker has it. I don't think Hina has it. Um, but it's too early for Kobe, too. I don't even know who we would even say. for If we're talking new era right now, I mean, I would probably... We, we need to see the new Admirals, too. I mean, we've seen Fujitori get down, but we have not seen anything from Ryokugyu. So, I, I don't know. It's too early for that. For this right here, this is difficult. Strongest and King could flip at any moment. Right now, it's a race. And I am interested to see who wins. I'm not sure really what we can do with that information because, again, Blackbeard is an anomaly. Blackbeard, we have not seen any Conqueror's Hockey feats, but we do believe that he may have it because of his status. We know that he's a Yonko. We know that he has Whitebeard's Devil Fruit, so he goes crazy as well. But then when we look at Luffy on the flip side, Luffy's hockey has improved so much. His Devil Fruit abilities have improved so much. He's trained with Rayleigh, who is the right-hand man of Roger. So I would love to see a Luffy versus Blackbeard. That would really be interesting. That would really be interesting. But if Blackbeard has Conqueror's hockey with Whitebeard's Devil Fruit and the Dark Dark Fruit, which can negate his Gomu Gomu no Mi, I mean, look, that's tough. That's tough. But let's keep going. Okay, so Goku runs the... All right, so we got a Goku gauntlet. It looks like we have round one, Naruto with infinite chakra. Then we have Ichigo, Saitama, Vegeta, and then Whis. And then it looks like we're using mastered ultra instinct Goku to start this off. So let's see what happens. Gauntlet, where does he stop at? Round one is Naruto with infinite chakra. And I hate to say this, he stops at round one. Ooh. MUI Goku is losing to Naruto in round one. Now it does say Naruto with infinite chakra, but is that enough? I, 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 speed wise, well, let's just see what he has to say. Let's see this. Honestly, Naruto shouldn't be number one because he beats everyone on this list except for maybe Whis. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> hey, yo, he's going crazy right now. So Naruto's beating Ichigo, Saitama, and Vegeta. I, I don't know. I don't I don't know about all that. And he said, except maybe Whis, as if that should be something that's debatable at this point in the series. I don't know what's going on. Where does he have Naruto at? I, I don't know. Because if Naruto has infinite chakra, he has infinite shadow clones, infinite beast bombs. Okay. Basically, any attack in his arsenal becomes infinite. That's true. 
that's true so this is a very weird case but with that being said as well when you're talking about goku and master ultra instinct to me his reaction speed is better than anything i've seen naruto do in terms of speed so if people wanted to say that goku in this form could technically speed blitz naruto before he's able to get these attacks off would they be wrong i would say i would say that's something that's a fair argument but let's keep watching not to mention in the naruto verse chakra is also life energy as shown if you run out of chakra you die so if you have infinite chakra that means you have infinite life so therefore you're immortal um i i'm not sure if that's how chakra works because that's like somebody saying if i give goku infinite key there's no way that he can get destroyed but the omni king can still erase him with attacks or things like that so chakra it does not necessarily give you infinite life if you have infinite chakra it just gives you an infinite reserve of energy that you can use for your jutsu but it's not going to give you that infinite life it does not mean that you cannot be killed at least that's how i'm reading it as maybe i don't know naruto fans do let me know if that's wrong but i don't think it gives you infinite life and there's absolutely no way goku can beat that so in conclusion mastered ultra instant goku Stops at round one. Yeah, I mean, I completely disagree, but Naruto having infinite chakra does make it kind of weird to really deal with because if we go with the statement that Naruto having infinite chakra means he's immortal, then I guess, but I don't think that's what infinite chakra means. I believe that infinite chakra is just giving him an infinite reserve of energy that he can use for his jutsus and everything like that. So if Naruto is able to summon an infinite amount of shadow clones, an infinite amount of biju bombs and things like that, that would work against Goku if Goku was not faster than Naruto. And I believe that Goku is so much faster than Naruto that he could potentially kill Naruto before Naruto's getting even any of these jutsus off. So this matchup really comes down to speed. And if it was base Goku or maybe even like Super Saiyan 2 or Super Saiyan 3 or something like that, then Naruto with infinite chakra and his burial mode, I do think he would take it. But when we talk about Master Ultra Instinct, the speed in that mode is faster than we've ever seen from anything from the Narutoverse and with everybody in the Narutoverse. Like Goku is faster than all of them. So with that being said, I do think if Goku speed blitzes him, he can win. Naruto's a little and Luffy's a badass. So let's go over Naruto's feats one by one and what they would actually do to Luffy. And just to get the point off, Naruto's not a He's just not as strong as everyone makes him out to be. All right, let's mm. start with the Golden Boy's signature move, the Rasen Shuriken. Okay. Now, while yes, it can cut through cells, it bounced off Choji, so it'll bounce off Luffy. Oh, well, he can just use one of his many chakra natures to cover him in water. Well, that's not going to work. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been able to beat Crocodile. He has to be completely submerged. Yeah, those water arguments that some people will be making on One Piece characters that have devil fruits, I mean, yes, he has to be fully submerged. We've seen even One Piece characters that have devil fruits that were able to survive while they're in water. We've literally seen that with Big Mom in Wano recently. So it's not just use water to destroy somebody. That's not, that's not how it works. Well, what about the Shadow Clones? Luffy is more than adept at taking on huge hordes of people with either the ga Gum Gum Gatling or one of his massive big fist attacks. All right, so with that point, I'm gonna say you're not wrong, but when we're talking about Naruto Shadow Clones though, it's not just standard Naruto. Listen, if it was Naruto part one multi Shadow Clone Jutsu, you got it. But when you start talking about the Naruto at towards the end of Shippuden or the Naruto with Baryon Chakra Mode and all these things, this is different. Naruto making Shadow Clones at that level with Karama Chakra Mode and Sage of Six Pads techniques, that Shadow Clone is way different than just a random fishman at Fishman Island with Luffy's box and Hody Jones and 50k of them get knocked out because of Conqueror's Hockey. It's not the same thing. So yes, Luffy has fought millions of people, but is he getting that off with Naruto Shadow Clones when they have all the Karama Chakra mode and things like that? I'm not saying he's doing that. It's not going to be that easy. I really like those attacks. Well, what about the Rasengan? Well, that's impact force. It won't affect Luffy. Well, what about Naruto's a ninja? He could just sneak up on him and stab him from behind. No, he can't. Luffy's observation hockey would give him away. 
long before he got there. Not to mention Luffy can see into the future several minutes and would see it coming no matter what. Okay, so that point with the Rasengan, with it, with it being Impact Force, maybe uh, because that's kind of going towards the Luffy's made of rubber so he can't really get punched and really wouldn't hurt him. But, I mean, again, uh, I don't know if I'm going to give that to him. It's definitely a tough one because the Rasengan impact is definitely different than that of like a Chidori, for instance, because we've literally seen Naruto and Sasuke boxing on the roof. And when they both had their attacks hit the water tanks, we've seen that the Rasengan was kind of small damage in the beginning, but towards the back of the water tank, there was a huge blast hole in there. So we know that the Rasengan actually goes through the object as well while destroying the interior. But when we talk about his most recent point with Luffy having future sight observation hockey, this is something that I mentioned on many occasions that a lot of Naruto fans were sleeping on. The future sight observation hockey would matter in some instances with One Piece characters. It would matter in some instances. Now people have made their case saying that it doesn't matter if Luffy can see to the future if he can't stop what's gonna happen next. But that's not always the case with other forms of hockey. And that's all I'm going to say, and that's what I'm going to leave it at that. Now let's go over strength feats. Naruto blew up a hollow moon. Say it with me, hollow moon. Sorry guys, it's just, it's not that impressive. Mm. Luffy folded a country in half and snapped the horn back of the man who could split continents. Mm. Now keep in mind that the strength to do this the first time, Garp had to warm up by punching through three mountains. And while that could be an exaggeration, Garp is a very literal type, and I think that he honestly did punch through three mountains. Well, Naruto has a bunch of chakra natures. Well, he doesn't use them. And even if he did, the only one that would really do anything is lava. Possibly fire. And unless his will is stronger than Luffy's, and we all know it's not, because Luffy's will is determined by his stubbornness, and that man is more stubborn than anything. Naruto wants to believe it? Believe he doesn't have a stronger will. All right, so when he's talking about the strength feats of Luffy versus Naruto, this is one part where I actually completely agree with him. If we take Luffy and then we take Naruto and then we remove all of their powers, the devil fruits, the hockey, the chakra and everything like that, and it's just based durability and strength feats, Luffy takes it automatically. And this is something that I've been saying about One Piece characters in general which a lot of Naruto fans had a problem with, is that when we look towards the durability and the strength feats of One Piece characters, we have to give credit for what they're able to accomplish without even using their powers or hockey, for instance. Like, they are just generally more durable than Naruto characters. That's a fact. But let's keep going. Next up, we have speed. Naruto's fastest speed feat was him dodging the light point blank. This was in the Sage of the Sixth Path. Luffy did it in his base form. His other forms only set to make him faster. See, that's very, very interesting because I already know where he's going towards. He's talking about how Luffy was dodging attacks from the pacifistas and things like that, which everybody always goes to. And then he obviously brought up why Naruto is fast as well. This one's actually tough. I mean, honestly, I think that Naruto is faster than Luffy, but I do think that there may be a point in the series in One Piece where Luffy is going to be keeping up with Naruto's speed. But there are some speed feats in One Piece that would argue against what I'm saying. It would say that Luffy's actually just as fast as Naruto, if not faster. I, it, it's tough. It's tough when you're doing different verses and you're getting into those battles as well. It, it's it's kind of tough to really say. But speed feat-wise, I'm not really too sure. Let's see what he says. In terms of physical strength, Luffy has him outclassed by a mile. Naruto's a normal guy. He's just, he has normal strength, and that's it. Luffy lifts 25-ton bricks all weekend. I try to tell and you. Lastly, let's go over durability. Naruto can still be hurt quite easily. Luffy, it takes a lot to hurt him, even without the gum gum fruit. We know that Naruto got stabbed by a sword. Yeah, he let himself get stabbed, but the sword still went through. His cloak did not do anything to stop it. It just heals him from it. Both have fought for periods well over 12 hours. And there you have it, folks. Naruto goes down on this fight. Sorry. So that was a great video because he was finally giving Luffy credit where people do not give One Piece characters credit in general. Especially Naruto fans, y'all don't like to give One Piece characters credit. But I'm not sure if I'm ready to give Luffy the edge over Naruto just yet. 
because I still think that Naruto is way more versatile than Luffy. There's so many things that Naruto has in his arsenal that Luffy does not have an answer for as of right now in the One Piece story. Do I think he will get there towards the end of One Piece? Who knows? I, I do think that there may be a point in One Piece where he will get there because just based on the way that the story is going in One Piece, we already know that there's going to be a point where the new era of characters in One Piece are going to surpass the Rogers and the Whitebeards. They have to at some point in the series. They have not done it yet, but there's gonna be a point in the series where they do. So the strongest characters in One Piece right now are not going to be the strongest towards the end. And once we see how the new era of the strongest characters in One Piece are looking like, then we can start to have these conversations because Naruto's ready in his adult form. He's ready, he has burial mode and things like that. So this debate is gonna be kind of twisted until we get to see more. But I will say that Luffy versus Naruto is much closer than a lot of you guys think. A lot of you guys killed me in that Konoha 11 versus Worst Generation video and this is kind of some of the stuff I was trying to say in that video. But you guys let me know down in the comment section below which TikToks you agree with or disagree with. Again, show these guys some love and I really appreciate you guys for showing this channel some love. We're almost at 100,000 subscribers which is insane. Thank you so much and with that I'll see you next time. Peace.